Against the Storm is a roguelite city builder set in a fantasy world where it never stops raining. You are the Queen's Viceroy, a pioneer set into the wilds to establish and manage new settlements. Your goal is to survive long enough and gather valuable resources necessary to rebuild and upgrade this smoldering city, the only safe haven against the Blightstorm. Like any roguelike, there's a natural progression of failure, i.e. your first couple summons are doomed to not survive, just like the real-life examples of roguelite city builders like Roanoke and San Miguel de Guadalupe. The best teacher can be the big mistakes we make on our way to our goals. How it works is you start out at the smoldering city at the beginning of every cycle. Your goal is to go out and find these three main resources. Food stockpile, machinery, and artifacts. These are the main currencies used to upgrade the smoldering city, which in turn give you permanent advantages to your settlements. How you get them is by establishing a successful city. You can start your city anywhere within one tile of the smoldering city. But there are certain tiles that give you more of the currencies and there are also seals. The seals are a way to extend the life of a cycle. At first, you only get 32 years in a cycle at the beginning of most settlements will take anywhere between 8 to 10 years, so you only really get 3 to 4 settlements every cycle until you break more seals. There are 5 biomes in the game. Royal Woods, Marshlands, Scarlet Orchard, Coral Forest, Cursed Royal Woods. They all have a different look and feel, but truly what separates them is what resources are available in each biome and what the weather will be like, because remember, it never stops raining but there is a difference between a drizzle and a storm. Once you've selected the perfect tile, you will be given some options. At the beginning, you won't have many, but you are able to select between your starting species and some additional resources you can start with. You will also be able to see additional effects that will be happening upon the settlement. Some are helpful, and some are hurdles that you will experience over the years to come while building your city. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Just slap a city on the tile you like and start the game in earnest. You'll learn a lot more in detail about what I'm about to say from the tutorial, but I'll give you a 10,000 foot preview of what this game is all about. So to have a successful settlement, you must fill the left blue bar reputation up before the red bar, Queen's Impatience, is full. If the red bar fills up before the blue bar, it's game over and the settlement fails and vice versa for blue bar. So blue good, red bad. Pretty simple stuff. One of the main ways you fill the blue bar is by finishing orders sent to you by the Queen. They come at different intervals, but you always get to pick between two. These orders can range from a wide variety of things, such as certain amounts of resources or building these types of buildings or keeping these creatures resolves up to the point for a certain amount of time. They start off with simple tasks, but as the years go by, they can become more and more demanding. Once you fulfill your order, you will increase the blue bar by one, while at the same time decreasing the red bar by one or more, depending on modifiers you have going. Remember, the red bar is always ticking up, so it is important to complete tasks and other events at a decent rate to decrease the red bar. How time works in this game is it can only flow in one direction, just like real life. Forwards, but you can speed it up and pause it depending on your need. Let's move on to other important elements. Like most city builders, you need resources to expand. To gain said resources, you'll need to gather them from the land, get them as a reward for finishing an order or an event, or trade for them. Who will be completing your quests are the species that inhabit this world. There are beavers, humans, lizards, foxes, and harpies. For me, it's absolutely madness that one of your key groups in your society is harpies. But maybe that's because I have PTSD from fighting so many of them in World of Warcraft. Yeah! But I digress. Each of these species have resolve, which essentially is their willingness to stick around at your settlement and or stay above ground. Every one of the five groups has different needs, but most of them have overlapping wants. The more the needs are met, the more resolve and the better they are weathering the storm. Speaking of the storm, did you know it never stops raining in this game? But not all weather is treated the same. There are three phases of weather, drizzle, clearance, and storm. Drizzle and clearance are not too difficult to handle, but what really gets things dicey is storms in, against the storm. This is when your carefully laden plans can go up in smoke. 
What makes the storm such a challenge in this game is it can affect many elements of your city. Mostly it's a major debuff to resolve, but it can also affect other elements of your settlement. For example, how much of a resource is gathered, certain workers or species lose more resolve, and much, much more. What dictates the severity of the storm is one, the biome, but two, and probably more of something you can control is the hostility meter. This meter goes up and down dependent on several factors, but rest assured, the lower it is, the better. It represents the overall hostility of the land, and it, the higher it goes, the more severe the storm will be. Some of the ways it increases are how long your settlement has been in existence, how many woodcutters are active, the amount of glades you've opened, and your overall hearth level and artifacts. Now let's tackle more of the random roguelite elements of this game. At the start, you're just dropped in the middle of a forest and are expected to provide for your people. Your starting zone will have a limited amount of resources. To gain more, you'll need to crack open different glades. There are three glade types, normal, dangerous, and forbidden. They all scale in difficulty from normal to forbidden. But they also give better resources with more challenge. The main difference is that once you pop open a dangerous or forbidden glade, there is an event in each that is not completed in a certain amount of time can have some serious consequences. So it is advantageous to be at your most prepared before opening one of them. I.e. don't do it during a storm or when you have low resolve. Completing these events can have a myriad of rewards from more resources to better modifiers to increase reputation. Other random roguelite elements are the cornerstones you'll receive, essential modifiers that will help you succeed with your settlement. They come at different times, but mostly right after the storm cycle has ended. They give boons to everything under the rain cloud, and the more you upgraded the smoldering city, the better the options are. As for the buildings in this game, you won't have access to many at the start, but again, the more upgrades you acquire, the more effective they'll get. But you will always not start with every building in the game. As you complete reputation points, you'll gain access to more blueprints that you can select from. Some buildings will be much more important depending on the biome and species you have at any given settlement. I know this has been a lot of information I'm dropping on you, but I swear we're nearly done. Last couple of items we have to touch on are Rain Punk, the Hearth, and Trading. The trading in this game is twofold. Once you have a trading post, you'll have traders visit you every couple of minutes. You can always demand them to come sooner, but that's at the cost of Queen's impatience. There are several different traders and each has a specialization that they bring trade goods, luxury, building materials, and food. The other element of trade is that you can always trade with the smoldering city or the other settlements that you've established during the cycle. With this trade, you'll only get amber, aka money, in return for the goods you send. Now the hearth is the focal point of your city. Like Frostpunk, you'll need to maintain the fuel so that people have a place to gather and a way to keep your houses somewhat dry. If it goes out, it can plummet your people's resolve and spell doom for the settlement. Thankfully, there are many resources you can use to heat it and also make sacrifices at it to give you a leg up for a time. Finally, probably one of the more advanced features of this game, Rain Punk. You might have heard, in this world it never stops raining, so the people have decided to use that as a source of energy to increase the productivity of their different buildings. Each cycle of the storm produces different types of rain that can be used. Certain buildings, are in, certain buildings and resources can only use one or sometimes all three. Either way, this can drastically increase the productivity of your settlement. However, there is a cost. The more rain punk implemented, the higher blight and corruption that you'll have to fight off. Depending on the level of at which you set the specific settlement, this will not affect you. But with higher difficulties, you have to combat the blight rot every time the storm starts. To do this, you'll have to set up blight posts to have people on call to cleanse these abominations on your buildings. So this is a game where you, the Viceroy, goes out on the Smoldering Queen's behalf to set up settlements to support the city. As you progress, you'll get more upgrades that can improve your settlements. While creating these settlements, you must juggle a number of elements such as resources, the resolve of your people, the reputation and displeasure of the Queen, even the land itself, which is why I fully endorse this game for anyone who likes that kind of weird top-down project managing. This shit gets me going. Having to properly manage time and resources and expanding at a decent rate to accomplish the reputation goal, but also at any point throwing that all on the back burner to deal with an impending glade event gives me that sense of a struggle and accomplishment that really turns a good game into a great game. Check out Against the Storm if you want to scratch that itch that is roguelite city building. My name is Kevin, and this has been Do It For Bruce.